are now listening to the IELTS podcast. Learn from tutors and ex-examiners who are masters of IELTS preparation. Your host, Ben Worthington. Hello there, IELTS students. This podcast is all about extending your essays. Now, there's usually two types of students. Those who write too much and those who cannot seem to write enough. And there's actually the, we can use similar solutions for both of them. One of the solutions is to get a strong essay guide or a sentence guide that shows you what to write for every single sentence in the essay. And if you follow that guide, you only have to follow just base, yeah, you only have to follow it 90% and you still got a bit of freedom to put in your own sentences and your own thoughts but roughly if you follow that guide you are there and you've got a strong coherent essay that structures your ideas now sometimes a student can follow that guide and still not have enough ideas and not enough sentences or words because maybe they put shorter sentences in the guide so in this case, what you can do is use some of the techniques I'm going to share with you right now to extend your IELTS essays. And if you do these techniques right, you're also going to boost your vocabulary score. Now, before we start with this, I just want to mention that if you've taken your exam and you haven't got the result, what I would strongly recommend is don't take it straight away. Listen to the success stories of the other students and most of them decided, okay, I'm going to wait three months and I'm going to put in some solid work to improve my writing skills, my essay skills. I'm going to invest in a program and even if the program costs you 130 or $100 or $70, if it saves you $300 when you pass the exam because you don't have to take the exam again, then it's basically a very good investment. Now, I wanted to mention these students because all of the students had one thing in common, and this is common not only for these successful students, but anybody successful. Let's have a look at uh, Vincent van Gogh, a famous Dutch artist. He just kept on drawing and painting, 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 and he produced over 800 works. And fair enough, he did die of depression, <laughs> and nobody recognized his genius when he was alive, but now he's one of the most famous artists in the world. Also, um, the Harry Potter creator, J.K. Rowling. Yeah, she was on welfare. She was receiving social security payments. She was depressed, divorced, single parent. But she kept on writing. And now she's one of the richest women in the world. Stephen King, he's a famous author. He was writing. I've actually read his biography and it's really interesting. And he's just kept on writing and writing. And he got about 30 rejections for, for one of his um, novels. Then his wife found it in the rubbish and told him to keep going. And yeah, eventually it got accepted. But the key here is just to keep going. Don't keep paying for exam after exam after exam. Get some feedback. Get um, Improve your work and then submit to do another essay. I know this isn't 100% IELTS related, however I do think it's an important piece of the puzzle when you're trying to get your IELTS success, when you're going for IELTS success. The key is just to work on your skills, improve your skills, then eventually once you've, once you've taken steps to improve, once you can see an improvement once you see the errors that you used to make, they start disappearing and you've got a good structure for your essay, then it's time to 
do the exam again. And this isn't just for the writing. You can apply this for the speaking, for the reading, for the listening, for all components. Now then, let's get started. So there are quite a few different ways to extend your essays. Now, one of these is commas. And this can extend your sentence sentences because we can obviously squeeze in another clause in there. I'm not going to go into that aspect, but what I will mention that we can use lists. Lists are really good. Now, before we jump into looking at lists, we need to, I just want to say two things. Generally speaking, we're not going to put lists in the introduction because here we need to be quite clear. We need to be, we need to give the examiner a clear direction of where we're going when we're not going to be looking to be boosting our lexical resource score here. We're just going to give the examiner a clear example of where we're going. And likewise, with the conclusion, I probably wouldn't include a list in the conclusion because in the conclusion you're not really arguing anything so you don't need to give uh, a list of reasons but you do need to just give an overview, a summary of your position, of your argument. So we're not going to use lists in the introduction or in the conclusion. We're going to use these lists in the body paragraphs and in the sentence guide, I'll just mention briefly, there is a specific sentence where you can put in the list and it just works perfectly because you are boosting your score and it's the perfect moment to put in the list. So I'll give you some examples of how we can use these lists. So the first one, we're going to use a list with commas, obviously. And like I said before, so I'll give you an, a sentence. We have a typical sentence. We can say traffic congestion charges are becoming increasingly common due to their effectiveness. Other measures have had less impact. Now, hopefully you might have written that sentence down and you could have identified an opportunity to extend the essay, uh, extend the sentence. Here, I'm going to give you a second uh, I'll give you this sentence again, but with the list. So here's the modified version. Traffic congestion charges are becoming increasingly common due to their effectiveness. Other measures have had less impact, such as cycle lanes, pedestrianized zones, and time zone limits. Can you see how that extra addition of maybe one, two, three, I don't know, about ten words. Here what we did is we just saw the word other measures and if you're well trained you can you can think okay let's have a look at some of the other measures. Why don't I just mention them? And this is topic specific vocabulary and this is what helps you boost your lexical resource score. I'll give you another example. A home gym should have a lot of a, a lot of specific equipment to work and develop each muscle group. Now, if we look at that sentence, which is the where's the opportunity to extend this? I'll read it again. A home gym should have a lot of specific equipment to work and develop each muscle group. Well, we can extend this sentence with a list by mentioning the specific equipment. So we can say, sometimes you might have to reorganize the sentence, which is what I did here just to make it sound a little bit better. But here's the new sentence. In order to work and develop each muscle group, a home gym should include a stretch band, dumbbells, stability ball, an elliptical machine, and a treadmill. Can you see? Here we've added another 10 words, and this is all topic-specific vocabulary related to the home gym. So instead of saying specific equipment, we said we mentioned the specific equipment, and we've picked up more points. 
And here is a bonus tip. Well, first I'll just mention, now, when you're writing your essays and you've finished, and you're probably at the stage where you're taking a, an hour, two hours, and that's fine. First perfect how to write an essay, then work on doing it in 40 minutes. Now, in this process of reviewing and improving your essays, have a look for opportunities where you can actually boost your score by adding a list. So you're going to look for words like uh, specific equipment, certain measures, uh, various authors, these kinds of things, uh, these kinds of words where we can actually just give an example of what we're talking about. And here's a very useful tip I'll quickly explain. If you're a doctor or if you're an IT engineer or whatever your profession, if you can organize the essay around topics that you know about in depth about, then you're going to help yourself significantly. Let me give you an example. So I've got a question about climate change and we're talking about the dangers of climate change. So if I'm a doctor, I have a, an extensive vocabulary of medical terms that I know how to use well. And I will probably talk about lung disease, respiratory problems, breathing problems, asthma, maybe blood capillaries, and doing this, I'm going to include topic-specific vocabulary. I'm going to be using the vocabulary correctly because it's my topic, and it's going to help me significantly. I'll give you another example. If we've got an essay about climate change again, and I'm a software engineer, then I might want to talk about the solutions of climate change, and some of these solutions might include statistical modeling of big data or computed, computational analysis of big data and of data of having different data points around the globe which are fed into a big uh, quantum computing machine like Big Blue at IBM. Okay, I don't know if that's true or not, or if it's possible, but it sounded believable. And if I was a computer engineer or a software developer, I would probably know if it would be plausible or if it's believable or if it's possible or if it does exist. So here, in a nutshell, if you know about a certain topic in certain detail, then organize your essay around it and use lists furthermore to boost your score. Now let's have a look at another way to um, increase our essay count, our word count. So we can use semicolons. So these are used in place of commas in lists where the items listed already have commas in them. Okay, so we could say department heads who received recognition were semicolon Dr. Gulan, immunology, uh, semicolon, Dr. Hill, neurology, Dr. Miro, ophthalmology, blah, blah, blah. And we can put them like one after the other just to list all the certain people there. So I'll give you another example. According to recent surveys, the best places to visit for vacation are Paris, France, okay, semicolon, Rome, Italy, semicolon, New York, USA, semicolon, Queensland, Australia, and London, comma, England. Can you see? We're just putting them um, after, in this case, we'll put the city and then the country. So that's one way how we're going to list certain data. I'm not a massive fan of that, but if you are interested in you think that would be useful for you, have a look at the, the blog post and there's some more detailed uh, information about using the semicolons. Now, another way that we can extend our writing, and this is probably good for academic task one when you're describing a map or a flow chart. What we can do um, is use ordinal numbers and this gives a very clear picture of what is happening 
in the image. And this is exactly what you want for academic task one for a map or a flowchart. Especially for a flowchart because there there is an order. And in the map, you want to kind of impl um, impose your own order just to make it easier for yourself and for the reader. So if you've got a map there, instead of just going through each detail, what we could say is, we could say, starting at the gate, first we have a long corridor that leads up to the door. Second, we have uh, an extensive garden area. And thirdly, at the end of the path, there is another gate which leads to the pond or whatever. You see, and by using the first, second, and third, we've effectively put an order, a process, for describing the map. And this is also true for the flowchart. And the flowchart, obviously, we're going to use first, second, and third because that's already got a structure to it that we should respect just for clarity. Now then, another technique um, which would probably be more useful for students at university or just for your general writing, maybe you're applying for a job, and it's probably less related, but I'll mention it anyway because hopefully you're on a mission not just to pass IELTS but to improve your English. And I won't go into that much detail with this, but other methods are we can use bullet points, and with the bullet points we can do this with A, B, and C. And we can use numbers, obviously, one, two, three. And this is more for your communication, maybe in emails with your work colleagues, or maybe in a, in a covering letter. You want to be very direct, and you just put the bullet points, like I'm an extremely qualified candidate for the following reasons, bang, bang, bang. But for your IELTS, whether it's task one, task two, I would generally avoid it because there's... Um, in the exam, you're getting rewarded for your use of grammar structures, for your use of cohesive devices, and these are more, the bullet points are more devices for like simplicity and clarity, and you're not going to pick up points for that. Like we said, you're going to pick up points for weaving it all together and then de developing your argument in a coherent manner. So, Thank you very much for listening. That's been um, everything I wanted to say about the lists and making lists and extending the word count. If you're still confused or if you just want to improve a lot faster and you're feeling a little bit frustrated, then have a look at the uh, sentenceguide.com. That will help you. And if you've got any questions, send me a message. And if you want some sample essays to look at, if you if you want um, a PDF with lots of tips, then why not sign up to ieltspodcast.com newsletter, and you'll get all of those um, goodies, all those PDFs, big PDF of IELTS material. You just get all that sent to your inbox, and it's super easy and really useful. All right. Have a fantastic day and remember what I said about perseverance and pushing through. It's going to take a while and any successful person has had to deal with a lot of failures but what separates them from those who are successful and those who, are, who never reach success is the tenacity and the, and the persistence and the insistence of keeping with it, sticking with it and pushing forward. Okay, so good luck. You can do it. Like I said a million times, you've learnt your own language. No reason why you cannot learn another language to an extremely high level like you're doing. So keep improving. Have a great day. IELTSPodcast.com.